Ahoy and welcome back. We were put aside for a fortnight in quarantine because we had to deal with a outbreak of filler episodes. I'm Luke. He, him, sometimes they, them, and I didn't really think about the context of the opening. Um, I'm Janine, uh, she, they, and, um, I did catch COVID and it was, it's one of, one of the reasons why this was kind of delayed. Um, hey y'all, don't podcast sick, just take care of yourself instead. Yes, uh, one of the most important lessons I've learned is if you're podcasting and assuming that you're not making a living off of it, you can just not do an episode and if people are that frustrated and leave uh that's fine like you're making something theoretically for the ages but you should not injure yourself or others or cause distress so you can do a goofy podcast that like a dozen people listen to I would, I would be delighted if half a dozen people listen to us. I haven't looked at the numbers, so that's a possibility. Ah. But, uh, yes, welcome back to Domance Dawn, this weird One Piece Simpsons hybrid podcast. If this is your first episode, I'm assuming it's because you want to see how we're going to cover uh, one of the filler arcs that people infamously don't enjoy. And uh, you know what? That is perfectly fair. Uh, this week we are going to be covering episodes 54 through 61 of One Piece, which are known as the Warship Arc. And I did have a few domains from the last episode that we did, which was the interview of Colt. First off, the Simpsons segment for Treehouse of Horror 11 is called Night of the Dolphin, not Day of the Dolphin. Day of the Dolphin was the movie that was sort of the inspiration uh edge of tomorrow slash live die repeat was based off of a japanese light novel not a manhwa and uh i also put a link into the rebecca sugar simpsons comic have you seen that one janine oh i do believe i have Uh, it's uh don't cry for me i'm already dead yes yes yeah that that pops up every now and then in the various uh, Simpsons Facebooks that I'm in. Also, just for a new segment, the current meme of choice in the Simpsons Facebooks that I'm in is the, uh, you know, uh, the movie, uh, you know, the episode you only move twice where they move to uh, the new town and Homer is working for Hank Scorpio. Yes, yes, I do. There's the scene where, like, Lisa's outside in nature and she's having fun until the reticulated chipmunk blows pollen into her face. Ah. Yeah, people are just using that for all their memes now, which is good because it means that there's no longer, like, a couple hundred people messaging various uh, monorail-related, like, social media contacts and asking them what will happen if the track would bend, or trying to, like, get people to play with them on this Simpsons reference that really only benefits them and serves to gain them internet clout. Don't do that. Okay. Ah. But yeah, uh, this is our first filler arc. And uh, if you're you're familiar with filler arcs, right, Janine? Oh, right. They're um, just periods of time where uh, the manga is still kind of like being written at the time. So they just got to like produce episodes based on something. So they just kind of make it up as they go. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and there's some filler arcs that are good or enjoyable uh and there's others that are just kind of like this didn't really have a point and kind of the problem with one piece is a lot of people really don't like these early filler arcs 
And so eventually they kind of just stopped doing them all together. And the counterpart part of that was One Piece arcs start to go longer and longer as the manga continues. And so they just start getting episodes to be released at a like glacial pace in terms of what new storyline stuff they are introducing. And like Oda tries to kind of leave gaps in, but it's kind of like, oh yeah, let's watch for like the five minutes of new content in this episode because they have to do this every week. So luckily a lot of anime uh, have kind of gotten smarter about that by like not making something that has to run year round. But I, once you get into this like level of fame where you're a significant portion of the economy, it's like, oh no, I guess the train has to keep running. Choo choo. Yep. Uh, that's why eventually people are just like, yeah, uh, don't, don't watch all these episodes. You could just watch these versions that we edited together. Well, when when we get to that particular line, I think we're going to have to maybe do lightning rounds if there's any new characters that we got to, like, come up with background characters to fill in slots. I think it's just more of a, will we be there in two years? Where will we be in two years? These are Who good knows? questions. This, this, this could become a, a podcast about... Um, flipping houses i i hate the idea of it but who knows what 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 kind of person i'll be in two years i mean if you have the money and are successfully flipping houses i think that it is like an abhorrent thing to do but i i guess i would be proud that you are making money to be able to do that who knows? Maybe I'll take into like, um, baby hunting. Yeehaw! Uh, yes. So, There's a lot of legal things in Texas. Yeah. Fun fact: None of my exes live in Texas. The song is wrong. Uh, these episodes, though, initially ran from January seventeenth through March 7th, 2001. Uh, which is kind of wild to think about. Because, yeah, we still haven't reached 9-11 yet. You know, I've actually spent so much time just, like, watching commercials right around this period of time. Um, because, like, when I was looking at the episodes that, like, came out at this time like i i had to stop and think about like where were we as a country that like not only like do some of these jokes get kind of like under the radar like that's kind of like a cool thing to joke about but also like there are some particular references that are like so of the time that like i cannot imagine what the current day equivalent would be and I love that, especially if it like references something that like I as a child who would have seen this like new would not understand, you know. Fair. Uh, speaking of those Simpsons episodes, uh, those included Pokemon, the one where Marge tries to help a convict who paints and it does not work out and Homer becomes a chiropractor, which I think is a plot line a lot of people remember. The Marge one isn't as good. Uh, worst episode ever, where Bart and Milhouse end up taking over Android's dungeon, and comic book guy dates Skinner's mom. Uh, tennis the Menace, where they build a tennis court, and Marge is angry that Homer is bad. Uh, Day of the Jack and Apes, where Sideshow Bob hypnotizes Bart to kill Krusty. New Kids on the Black, which is Navy propaganda boy band. And Hungry Hungry Homer, where Homer goes on a hunger strike to stop the isotopes from moving to Albuquerque. And Janine, you are familiar with my fun fact about that episode. Yes, I am. Uh, it, it led to the actual Albuquerque minor league baseball team becoming the isotopes. 
which the next time I head out there, I, I want to get a shirt. Also, see if they do have that particular Southwestern hot dog, like, inside the stadium. Like, I'm a little bit curious. I will. Uh, the really, I feel like it doesn't properly reflect New Mexican flavors, because it would be red and green chilies Christmas style over there. Oh. I have watched the binging with Babish, uh, where they, or Babish, Babish, uh, where they do make it, though, and I would eat that. I had a fancy hot dog today for lunch. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. It was hot dog day not too long ago, and I really missed out because, like, I didn't realize until, like, um, Wiener Schnitzel was actually already closed, and I was like, oh, they had a deal. Oh, because it was National Hot Dog Day. Yes, yes, it was. Yep. Uh, Dev and my co host from many other shows and friend IRL. That's such a weird thing for, of me, for me to say. Um, yeah, we hung out and had hot dogs and barbecue because the actual hot dog place you wanted to go to was closed. Which is a shame, because that place had larger alcoholic slushies, but this one had fun ones. Uh, new characters unlocked include Jack Crowley, Bruce Valanche, Gallagher, Tom Savini, Andre Agassi, Venus and Serena Williams, Madam Mimi, LT Smash, JC Chaze, Justin Timberlake, Lance Bass, Joey Fatone, Chris Kirkpatrick, Captain, Tanil, Alfred E. Newman, and Cesar Romero. Wow. And that's I only thought we would have got Gallagher earlier. Surprisingly, no. Like, but I mean, there are two Gallagher's. Right, yeah, but like, I mean, Gallagher wasn't even fresh as a reference in this era of The Simpsons. No, like, I think the most up-to-date thing he had done at this time was, I think, Project Greenlight had come out at that time, or like the fake Comedy Central version where they were going to make a series about Jesus coming back and he was going to be played by Gallagher. But I could be wrong. Anyways, uh, that's, we that, they're they're like I could hear somebody listening to this podcast immediately opening up another tab. Comedy Central. Ah, it was was that uh, wild. Okay. So it was Contest Searchlight was the name, and it was a parody of Project Greenlight. And yes, uh, Peter Gallagher playing a fictional version of himself was supposed to play Jesus in a show called Jesus and the Gang, and then it fell apart. Wow. I would not have been able to appreciate that as a child. But as an adult, kind of want to see it. It's only four episodes, apparently. Amazing. Even more. Uh, it did not come out until 2002, though. So I feel like that's still kind of the point of Gallagher being a washed up joke in a lot of ways. But, you know, if, if those Gallagher brothers are still enjoying smashing watermelons and playing out their weird kinks and other ways i'm happy for them and you know what else i'm happy to do what's that i'm happy to go and uh give the names of the episodes that we are covering this week including foreboding of a new adventure the puzzling girl apis apis the puzzling girl apis i don't have a list oh no did i not share it with you was I a boo-boo the... No, I... Golly gosh. You know, um, I think this is why some sometimes stuff like catches me off guard. Because I have memory problems. 
We both do today. <laughs> By the way, I have you had Magic Spoon? I just, you know, I just, like, got a, um, a few boxes, and I'm, like, gonna try it out, but, like, I'm, like, really apprehensive. No, though we did sign up for Fresh and Lean, and I don't have any sort of podcast advertising that I can share for, like, a discount, but one of the boxes arrived super early, and then mine, they said that they tried to deliver today, but they didn't even knock on the door. Oh, man, like, I hate that. I know. It's like, I'm home with my friend, and we are playing a board game on the floor in the main living room. Wow. Also, yeah. Also, they left the last box at the neighbor's, which what? was like four block, which was like four houses down. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I sent you the list. All right. I got the list now. All right. So I did the first one. All right. The Holy Beast, Abbas's Secret, and the Legendary Island. Eric's Raid, Great Escape from Warship Island. Lone Island, In a Distant Sea, The Legend, Lost Island. Duel in the Ruins, Strained Zorro vs. Eric. Luffy Completely Surrounded, Admiral Nelson's Secret Plan. Those Who Soar in the Open Skies, Revival of the Thousand Year Legend. Angry Finale, Cross the Red Line. Yeah, uh, but the arc is just kind of a whole lot of nothing, and like, it's the most possible filler of filler. Uh, essentially, we meet Apis, a young girl who escapes from a marine ship and is picked up by the Straw Hat Pirates. Uh, they earn her trust, even though they are pirates, and tries to cook them food, which she does not do a good job at. The Marines, under uh, Commodore Nelson Royal, uh, who is working with Eric, a mercenary, and Hardy, who is a lieutenant commander, chase after them. Apis can talk to animals and is told about a gust, which Nami senses moments after. And they escape the Marines, but end up in the Calm Belt, where there is no wind and current, and where Sea Kings go to breed. The crew works together to escape, and end up at Apis' home on Warship Island. Bokuden, Apis' grandfather, welcomes the men for pork buns, and explains that the Navy is after Dragonite, not the Pokemon. While the pork buns are cooking and Bokuden is droning on, Apis sneaks off to steal the pork buns. Luffy went to go and look at them, gets blamed for taking all of them by Nami, but then the two of them find Apis and Grandpa Ryu. Ryu means dragon. An elderly millennial dragon. Apis explains that she can talk to Ryu because of the Whisper Whisper fruit, though also Luffy can understand her for reasons that are never really explained, but are also weirdly canon. I accept it at this point. Yeah. Uh, like, so... like, I don't I don't expect it to ever have an answer, but, like, just, sure, bud. I don't fucking care. Like, talk to whoever you want, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Ryu wants to head home to Lost Island, but can't remember where it is, and the Marines are also after his bones, which are the source of Dragonite, and... Nelson and Eric both think that it will grant them immortality. Nami and Luffy get the crew together and sneak Grandpa Ryu off the island. Eric, who has the sickle, sickle fruit, uh, follows close behind. And this is a bit where they definitely had to uh, fix the subs because uh, initially... Uh, there's a recurring bit where Luffy thinks that Eric has the sicko sicko fruit in English because he hears sicko as sicko. And initially in Japan, it was the kama kama fruit, which Luffy heard as the okama okama fruit, which essentially means queer. And it's like, yeah, Oda wouldn't put that in as a joke. It's not it's not a great look. I don't know. Like, I don't see like, sure, it's not overtly bad but i don't see too much allyship right now 
I mean, like, I could be a really fucking surprise later on, but because there's so much episode. Oh, I, I mean, I've made oblique references, but no, there is a character who is a actual Okama who appears and... Uh, God, yeah, they are amazing. But yeah, here it's just a... I'm pretty sure Oda didn't put this joke in because uh, he actually is like a generally well-meaning person who doesn't necessarily aim to punch down. Well, anyway. with how much uh, the Navy is written like that, I can, I can cool my suspicions. I mean, this is also the one where you get a very un oda like design for Nelson Royal, who is pretty much just giant, fat, disgusting man. Yeah. Which, not great. Uh, so they take off with Grandpa Ryu tied to a wooden raft, and uh, they find a mysterious wall behind which is a lost island. Nami figures out that this island is actually the original home of everyone on Warship Island, but it's not the dragon's nest. Warship Island is the nest, which Ryu suddenly remembers. And it's kind of like, okay, so it took us like two episodes to get here. What you're, you're, You are literally just vamping for time. Like, I understand it's the journey, but... Eh... And so as they prepare to escape, they face Eric once more, but get around him. And then they get uh, surrounded by Commodore Nelson, who uh, just has a bunch of steel nets that tie all of the boats together. That way you can't, like, sail through, which is kind of like... Did you ever do soccer growing up? Uh, Once. I was forced to do soccer many times and my soccer strategy that we never got to approve was just everybody stand in line and hold hands and then just run together. Oh my god. Can't get past that. Uh, my other plan was pretty much make friends with kids on the other team because I don't actually like soccer and uh, I guess if I ever get the ball just pretend to digivolve into a person who knows how to do actual soccer. Ah. Huh. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they made an entire Pokemon where that was, like, the thing, so. Oh, yeah, I love British soccer rabbit. Uh, yeah, so the crew works together. Uh, Eric moves to steal Grandpa Ryu, even taking uh, Appy's hostage because he wants the immortality for himself, but Grandpa Ryu sends him flying. Nelson decides to kill Ryu for the Dragonite, but is stopped by Luffy as an island rises from the ocean and more millennial dragons appear. Ryu gets mortally wounded by Nelson, but before he dies, he gives Luffy a final message for Oppies before Luffy destroys Nelson's ship, causing the others to be destroyed as well. We also get a bit here that is very non-canon, where uh, Zoro is able to just cut steel without a problem. And it's just like, oh yeah, I could easily do this, and like, in 50 episodes or so, it's going to be like, no, I can't cut through steel. I hope someone got fired for that blunder. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Like, like narratively, it, it, it performed what it was supposed to do. It gave, mm -hmm. like, him a challenge. Sure, things aren't going to be, like, up to canon, but... There's a lot of episodes... Yeah, there are. And I mean, for what this is, they try and give everybody a little bit of a moment, a little bit of characterization. Uh, so the nesting ground fully rises, as it does every thousand years, which is why they're called Millennial Dragons. Ryu completed his final wish, but Apis is still upset until Luffy tells her that Ryu really enjoyed the last year of his life with Apis. The island is also where dragons are reborn, which is why people think that Dragonite makes him immortal. Eric ends up showing up again to murder Nelson and plans to steal the Dragonite, but Luffy knocks him away again, and Api says goodbye to Grandpa Ryu and her friends. 
That is when the party heads towards the red line, the strip of land blocking their entry into the Grand Line, so they have to head up Reverse Mountain through a dangerous current in a storm to make it into the Grand Line because their rudder is broken. Eric appears one more time, and Nami knocks him off the boat, presumably down the mountain where he dies. Because he's got a devil fruit. And, uh, like, he, he, he goes out sinking that water, and it's already, like, jagged rocks, and a real, it, I don't think he should survive. Uh, he only makes one more appearance, which is in a video game. Yeah. Nami kills I mean, a guy. Yeah. I, I, basically, if you want, if, if you want something that's, like, really cathartic for this filler arc that you, if you might not like it uh consider in the last fucking five minutes nami kills a man mm-hmm. and like everybody's like oh yeah that was smart yeah why didn't we think to just like kick him in the water where he can't swim and make him <laughs> die <laughs> yeah it i I have now watched this, I think, three times in preparation for the episode, and uh, it's it really lacks a like theme to it, or like any sort of idea, or like people. These people just want immortality, but there's never any sort of like poetic justice or anything like that chew it it's just like oh yeah we're going to go on an adventure to look for some dragon bones and also try and find what this dragon's going for it's it's not good and also weirdly it was so bad that poor kids skipped it well as a person who's watch who's watching One Piece for the first time right now, I loved it. Ooh. Um. But it's not because um I think that it particularly brought anything new that could be said, as much as I feel like um having this episode right now where everybody kind of, like having this arc right now where everybody got at least like some time to shine to be able to show like oh hey let's reiterate what our goals are let's reiterate what our abilities are and like each of us have a moment where we look really cool and like i felt like that kind of like solidified like the season for me and Mm -hmm. not only that i found that while the story was a little bit predictable um for the grandpa dragon uh grandpa Mm -hmm. i think that it still went in such a way that it was like it kept me invested it kept my attention Mm -hmm. um it, it it was overly traumatic but I I like overly dramatic shit. So, you know, grain, grain of salt for me. No, I, I, I think coming from a person who is unfamiliar that it is good to hear you say that because I'm, I'm jaded and I also know the reputation of these episodes and yeah, like in the manga we pretty much get the scene where they accidentally sail into the calm belt and then we just get them going up the red line. And, like, the danger's there, except for Eric showing up to say, ha ha ha, I'm going to make you all die, before Nami murders him. So. I could watch that all day. Just, I mean, like, I knew, like, when this guy showed up, I was like, he's we're not going to see him again. Like, if if anything happens, like, this guy's like, private investigator and like i guess killed the person he was working for like he's just not gonna not gonna fucking do anything 
So like yeah. just to find out that he he died in such a, a gruesome way. I mean, like not really gruesome in the idea that like it is gory, but like in a gruesome way that's just like there definitively we saw him go into the water. Eric died on the way back to his home island. Also, I love that it's just, it's Eric. Eric I mean, like, yeah, you could be very thankful that these two characters that are the weakest villains probably ever um, die. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, at least that, that filler arc has the decency to only leave like the good ones i guess alive and even that i guess it's only like the little girl because like the grandpa dies too well let's recap those characters as we try and assign them to our simpsons characters who have been released so far up first we've got Oppies. and i've only got one for her because i forgot that my initial pick from a character who hadn't been released yet and i don't remember who it is because i realized that oh i picked someone who hadn't been out yet and i need to just hide my shame uh my suggestion is the german santa girl from simpsons roasting over an open fire who talks about the santa of germany interesting interesting um i was going to go with um the monobrow baby, if we haven't used that one yet. Uh, Gerald. Maggie's rival? Yes. I didn't I... know about using Maggie, but I felt like going back into the older episodes, there was animosity and there was ingenuity behind these babies in a non-talking a uh, weird, better format than what the Rugrats could be able to provide us. Even though they both have roots in class in Klasky Supo, or however you pronounce the company that initially provided animation for both. Like I can see in my mind's eye, like the weird mashup of everything that was its logo but i cannot tell you what the letters were for each piece all right well it's a filler i feel like the fact that gerald (laughs) fuck am i putting this baby in the uter zone already yes i am because it's a baby obvious is a kid obvious is a kid who was able to escape from the marines on her own all right. I feel like German Santa girl is at least a bit more respectful. I just thought that like the like you know monobrow baby was at least re- more resourceful. Uh, I think it was also uh... the the hat. She has a hat on. And it was like, you know what? This is Oppie's vibe. I'll concede with you that they that there's a better headdressing choice for your kid. Hot dog. All right. Uh, we then have Nelson Royal, who just awful. Bad. Bad design. Not not great representation. I was uh, thinking about that while I was thinking about who was bad, fat representation. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if we have used or if we could use Moomoo Homer. Ooh. Uh, because, we, we, like, it's... It's a different Homer. I mean, like it's it's the same Homer canonically, mm-hmm. but like 
it has its own toy. It has its like separate kind of like material identity outside of it, as you would like when Bart becomes a nerd. If that's even like up on the table, I don't. I think that was what I tried to use, but I don't know. Like somebody's like one off thing doing something else. Is I, that no, I I would say that uh Moo Moo Homer, aka King Sized Homer, is a viable alternative because yeah, it is something distinctive enough that we know what we are talking about and yeah, I, I, I think that's a good possibility. Uh, did you have anything else for Nelson? Um, I didn't, but I did also want to add that um, Homer becoming obese in order to be able to work at home and the idea of like all of this in the entire episode was like just kind of like really insensitive to fat people. And I feel like yeah, yeah. it's in the same kind of vein. So like... I was pretty passionate, like, if, and if I was not going to get this, I was going to push for Uter so fucking hard. Okay, uh, so the two that I had were Paint Drinking Pete, who, uh, replaces Hungry Hungry Homer, and then, uh, Couch Gag Fat Man, who the family can't get on the couch. I, I think Moo Moo Homer fits. Uh, because, yeah, that is... There's a few that when we rewatch the Simpsons that is just like, yeah, let's let's skip this one. <laughs> so congrats. You got Moo Moo Homer. Awesome. It is both uh, an honor and a shame. All right. Up next we have Eric. Uh, and also Apis is two stars, Nelson is one star, Eric is two stars. Uh, I had two suggestions i had jack crowley just to put him together i don't think he's necessarily a good fit and then i also had knifey spoony man Ooh, i love knifey spoony man um i i i actually only had disco stew in this one um because i know you've been trying to burn him before and i feel like that this guy is just kind of sleazy enough to do it um but knifey spoony man knifey spoony man is a candidate I can get behind for this shitty filler arc man. A man who yeah. knows what is a knife and what is a spoon. And uh, made it into a game. <laughs> yes. I mean, why not? Uh, we then have Bokudin, a one-star character who is Apis' grandpa, who drones on and tells long stories. I've got some interesting ideas. I'm interested to see what you've got, Jimmy. I'm interested in your ideas because I'm just willing to blow Abe Simpson <laughs> on this character. <laughs> nope. You took too long of a pause. <laughs> so, uh... Well, I I think I can meet you halfway, but I have three suggestions. My wild idea is Springfield's oldest man who meets its fattest. I also had Methuselah from the Methuselah Bible trading card. But also, more importantly, and this is where you're going to give me a nice compliment for figuring this one out, Methuselah played... By Abe Simpson in Simpsons Bible Stories. Huh. That's really good. That, yeah, that is, yes. Hot dog, we've got a wiener. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like this is one where... We are vibing, we are understanding where each other is coming from, and I, I, I've just been focusing on these characters for so long, and next week, we, or in next episode, we just get to be disappointed by the fact that Lenny Kravitz hadn't shown up in The Simpsons yet. Ooh. Uh, up next, we have Hardy, who is another one-star character who isn't really given a name, but he does have a name. 
because uh, his main job is he's kind of the straight man to Eric. Not not that Eric is necessarily comedic, but he is the person who's just trying to do his job. Uh, to and, be honest, like I I didn't even like have a name with him. Like I could not think of anyone so unimportant enough. So you had nobody for Hardy? I didn't. Like I, I had I had names and ideas for all of them except it's just the most like he felt like the the person in Saturday Night Live that is not the joke person, but the person who just like assures the audience, hey, this is not normal. Yeah, the straight man. Yeah. Uh, I had two of them and I tried to go for uh, deeper picks mostly defined by facial hair because Hardy does have a pretty good mustache. Uh, I had the French police officer from the Creeps of Wrath or from the Crepes of Wrath and then the robot controller from this little wiggy. And I feel like French police officer fits more. Mainly in that he is in a uniform and has a mustache and generally tries to help and do his job. Yeah, you don't see that a lot in uniformed people inside of this fucking show. So, you know, definitely pulling from real life details. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't think of a reason to object. I'm not really particularly saving a French policeman for anything. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be someone who's more French. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's going to be someone who's more policeman, but the both of them and in needing of a mustache, I cannot. I mean, we're not dealing with four kids, one piece, so we don't need to worry about anyone with an offensively French accent showing up. Until we get the fake Sanji, but that's that's not for a while. Uh, last, we have probably our most complicated one, which would be Ryu, a.k.a. Grandpa Ryu, a.k.a. Grandpa Dragon. Which I promised you there is a character named Grandpa Dragon. You did. You did. After Daddy the Father, I was like, just done. I was like, fuck it. Yeah. Anything could be a name now. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not quite JoJo's Bizarre Adventure levels of anything can be a name, but it's pretty far. Uh, so, who did you have for Ryu? Now, initially, I was thinking Jub Jub, but I think that we might have already used Jub Jub. Uh, we have not used Jub Jub. Oh, wow. Jub Jub's in the running. I have one more name now. Uh huh. That's Jub Jub. Um, that's going to be my lizard pick. Mm -hmm. Um, for my old man pick, um, if we have not used him yet, Vampire Abe Simpson. Interesting. It, it, it is a shame we are over 20 years too early for the one where all of the senior citizens turn into dinosaurs. Which would give us so many options. But also, It would, and like, you know, it would fill us up on a lot of potential other monsters that are out there. Uh... I have three suggestions here, but I weirdly did not think about Jub Jub. Uh, so the ones that I have for Ryu, this two-star character, are Godzilla. Uh, there is also the dinosaur that King Homer fights, and there is also Chirpy Boy. Hmm. Are you familiar with all of those? I am, I am. I 
the first two really like them as ideas mm -hmm. like a lot more um i want to know how you feel about jub jub uh i can be convinced to go for jub jub i feel in son of a gun my my brain is been poisoned by the Simpsons Facebooks because it's just like I think that's relaxo. Most of the posts on the Rela Rancher Relaxo Facebook are just here's something I find relaxo. Okay. Um. Hmm. I I just gotta take another look at Jub Jub. Yeah, okay. Jub Jub is uh, very sad, entire looking. I feel like Jub Jub fits more. Yeah, I mean, everything about it, like, not only like the fact that Jub Jub looks sad and tired, but like, there are moments where Jub Jub looks like that they emote like love and appreciation for like a brief moment. Mm hmm as um as they get serenaded with you make me feel like a natural woman and i felt like that was the moment that i was like if i if i didn't use this name already i think it fits to the core of the this is a lizard that is not really going to get more screen time but i haven't like any really seen any recent simpsons so i don't know if like jub jub became like a fan favorite out of nowhere um so or like just one of the many recycled aspects of the simpsons but um i felt like it just kind of like hit the same notes i know i overanalyze like a lot of stuff when it comes to these characters especially when we have episodes when there's so few characters mm -hmm. but um that's the goddamn podcast though uh jub jub last appeared in 2017 according to simpsons.fandom.com Holy shit, what's Jub Jub doing? Like, I'm glad to hear Jub Jub's still alive with how many other Simpsons characters can get off, but. Uh, looks like Draedric Tatum and Lenny are at a park with uh, Marge and uh, Selma. And Draedric Tatum has a gazelle, and Lenny has a crocodile. I haven't seen that episode, so I have no context for that image. Huh. Uh, but yeah, apparently Jub Jub was coined by uh, Conan O'Brien. Ah, that's right. Our red-haired straw hat pirate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shanks! So, uh, yes. Uh, to go over that list again, we have Oppies as... Or we have German Santa Girl as Apis, we have Boo Moo Homer as Nelson Royal, we have Nighty Spoonie Man as Eric, we have Methuselah in brackets Abe Simpson as Bokudin, we have French Police Officer as Hardy, and we have Jub Jub as Ryu. Grandpa Ryu. And yeah, we are going to get back onto the cruise. I am excited because uh, I want to watch more one piece and i kind of stopped because i got heavily into jojo's bizarre adventure but i only have like four episodes left now damn yeah well i think a lot of people are waiting for the second part of uh stone ocean to come out that's the lesbian prison one according huh. to Twitter. yeah okay um yeah uh next time we're going to have a whale of a time and also we're going to check in on some old friends i hope mary's dead i'm sorry oh uh but yes you have been listening to domance dawn our weird simpsons and one piece podcast uh thank you for listening we typically try and have new episodes up every two weeks uh and they generally have very nice covers by colt hoskins who you can find on twitter at colt hoskins 
I believe I need to just put this section down as a uh, Uh, yes, who is Colt Hoskins on Twitter. And, uh, yeah, we have a, a Twitter account for the show itself, which is at Domance. And if you go to DomanceDawn.com, it will bring you to our Tumblr, where we post things. Please like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast. Uh, Janine, where can you be found online? I can be found um, on Twitter at Janine Juliet. Um, you could also be able to find me at my favorite Pokemon, but I don't know for how long because I don't know how I feel about things. Life is weird. Stay tuned. And you can find me on Twitter at, at Coltreg, that's K-L-T-R-E-G, or at Luke Hare, L-U-K-E-H-E-R-R dot com. Uh, thank you for listening to this episode. Uh, if you are a person listening to this who is unfamiliar with One Piece and would like to come on and enjoy playing along with us, uh, please do so. Also, we occasionally put up characters for fan suggestions. Uh, nobody wanted to play with Eric, quite possibly, because I was very critical of the last ones, but if Janine had stopped when I was very critical of her initial suggestions, we wouldn't have a podcast, so Come at me. Oh, and also if you go to our Twitter, you can see the little birthday song that I wrote for Bashi. It's really good. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back in another two weeks as uh, we're going to deal with a whale and get drunk. Catch you, then safe sailing. <laughs> Thank you.